Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, and today we will be discussing the money services business plus circle flow of funds. Very recently, you may have seen a lot of money transfer operators worldwide, whether they are just purely money transfer operators or even just crypto operators or a mix of both, have been using Circle in some manner to sort of aid in the transfer of cross-border payments. This is a, maybe looks like slightly convoluted, but trust me, it's not. This is a representation of how currently companies are engaging with Circle as a money services business in the United States and how they're using Circle to use that platform and that offering in addition to their own licensing and network and you know the whole uh, suite of correspondent payouts and are facilitating the movement of money. So let's start with this thing. It's um, it always starts with you know the customer portal. So you know here you have a customer and the customer can do pretty much two things. You can either have a customer you know, a user can come in and they can fund their services using, you know, they can fund their account using a debit card or an ACH. So this is, this represents the fiat fund and the customer portal would be that of the customer, you know, of, of whoever is offering the service. On the other side, you could have a customer, you know, using their uh, non-custodial wallet like Coinomi or Metamask or Trust, etc., and they could load funds from there. And these funds, whether they are in fiat or crypto, will then come over here. And this is the interesting part. So this is the money services bit. bit. So this was obviously the front facing part, but obviously it has to be managed by some licensed entity. And so let's say we have a, a money services business X and they have an MSB bank account. And when the funds are processed from debit card or bank, they come over here. This is their transaction management system or the transaction management engine. It has things like onboarding, compliance, reporting, and monitoring. And as I said, there are two uh, aspects to it. There is the fiat aspect, which is shown here, and the customer portal aspect in crypto, which is shown here. So the fiat funds, needless to say, will be sitting in a bank account. And the crypto funds, well, they can be sitting in a whole lot of, you know, it, it depends. You could have them, they're still sitting in the in, in the user's non-custodial wallet, but when a certain service needs to be done, they need to be transferred from that wallet to the wallet of the um, money services business. That is, that would be a requirement. So what happens from there? So from there, you know, Circle comes in, and I'm going to show Circle in a in a in a very detailed manner because, as you can see, it's got quite a lot of happening. Uh, quite a lot is happening over there. But again, you can have uh, let's say a payout is due now, so you can have this uh, balance that is sitting in the wallet of the MSB. Uh, you can transfer these USDC to a Circle address that they may have over here. So this MSP actually has an account with Circle. As you can see, it's designated here as customer number two, MSPX. So the account title of funds are FBO to MSPX. That means any funds that are kept over here are essentially client funds, but Circle doesn't do the FBO part. Circle says, listen, I'm just providing you with a bank account where you can push your money in, and with that, you know, you have, you, I'm holding on to a feared balance. From there, I can issue, you know, USDC or I cannot. Uh, it's all up to you. But I do not know who these funds belong to. Uh, so I am not going to be taking any re legal responsibility or responsibility on my license as to where these funds are coming from. So the account title of the funds are FBO to MSBX basically means that this has to be, oh, I have a mistake here, account, oh, you, and so now that goes on the video, cool. Anyways, so um, basically it means that the funds being placed over here, the MSP is responsible for them in the end manner with the regulator, etc. So they have to know how much money belongs to whom and how. So the two ways that money can come into circle is, as I said, fiat or a USDC wallet. 
From there, what can this customer do? So from there, the customer can do two things. And this is where it's depicted here. They can, you know, for example, someone may have a USDC. That USDC is changed for uh, fiat. And then Circles Bank can actually transfer the money out. They can send it out to anywhere where, you know, uh, where Circle deems money can go, typically it usually, usually it goes to the title account that is, you know, of the MSP. But in some cases I've heard, I cannot confirm this, that Circle is able to push money out to other aggregators or to other players where there may be an account title in your name. Otherwise, I don't think so Circle would be doing that. Uh, but anyway, so you can push money out from Circle's bank account to an aggregator for, and because the aggregator is already plugged into various markets, or you could do it directly into areas where you may be licensed. So let's say I have an account title, you know, for MSBX here, and I could also have an account with an EMI in Europe under my own name, in which case Circle will push the funds out to me in Europe. And uh, in addition to that, if you have USDC and someone someone gives you the money and you want USDC, and then needless to say, you can push USDC wallet to wallet transfer of USDC to any of the wallets worldwide. So that is how a typical MSB would operate. They would bring the client funds into their bank. They would have users connect their wallet and have provide the cryptocurrency of choice. It may or may not be USDC, but they could certainly convert it to USDC. And then the MSV basically holds on to that balance. It is either holding on to a financial balance, a fiat balance, or it is holding on to a USDC balance, in which case they can transfer money out anywhere as long as the title is in the name of MSBX. This is what Circle can do. So what does it look like if you look at it from a heuristic point of view of how Circle score would look like when you have multiple MSBs? So this is what that would look like. So this is Circle score, and Circle has obviously two areas uh, that they can define. They have a fiat balance, which is the banking relationship, the banking rails that they have, and they have the USDC balance, right? So Circle can issue USDC against a fiat balance that you may have. So let's say in this example, you have MSB A, B, C, and D. And as you know, they are all having fiat balances. So this just shows a representation that these MSBs are connected to Circle's bank, right? Fiat balance. On the flip side, all these MSBs also get an equivalent USDC wallet, right? In which they can have USDC issued. So MSB A can have a USDC issued from their fiat balance converted to USDC. And this is where Circle USDC balances come out, right? So you have that ability to do that over here. You will also notice that the MSP A can send a USDC to MSP C. It, why? Because obviously it's a USDC address to USDC address. So they can do an, an internal um, change of ownership of the USDC asset immediately, almost very immediately. But they cannot do this on their bank account, even though it's it's uh, maintained here. Circle doesn't want MSBA balances to be shifted to MSB balances, etc. internally on their holding. That's not the business that they're in. They would rather have this. So if you have, let's say, 10 uh, USDCs over here, which is $10, and you want to send $5 here, you can transfer 5 USDC internally, and it'll come over here. So that is very, very quick. It's able to, you know, it, it happens, and, it, and it, that movement happens a lot. So with this, how do we take, um, how do money transfer operators worldwide are doing this thing? So what's happening here is money transfer operator worldwide have basically found that this, this particular thing, this thing that you see over here, the USDC balance essentially functions as a settlement and a clearing bank. Why? Because if you are a money service operator for, around the world, anywhere in the world, you can actually open an MSB account or, or an account with Circle. Think this, Let me say that again. Let's say you're an MSB account holder in Brazil, right? You can actually open an account with, with Circle. You will have a fiat, uh, you know, uh, details from where you can, where you can push in money or money will be pushed out from there. And you can maintain a USDC balance here. 
So if imagine, imagine if these MSP A, B, C, and D are all foreign. They can all have an account here and they can settle amongst themselves immediately. So let's say MSP A has a balance. It converts that balance into USDC. And now it wants to give it to a partner in, uh, I don't know, let's say India very quickly. And you can see that they can transfer the USDC balance right there to India into a wallet address in India. If they want to use an aggregator, they can use that as well. Circle has a bank. They can use an aggregator. Using the aggregator, they can transfer the balance. The aggregator themselves could also have an account over here. Let's say, you know, for, for argument's purpose, MSBD is the aggregator. So anyone who is a member of this aggregation network can have an instant settlement provided there, you know, over here. Um, and this is unheard of before because now it allows you to work essentially 24-7. Your counterparty risk is absolutely reduced. You can settle amongst your member peers that may be stateside or non-stateside with the USDC immediately. And here's the best part. You now have companies that may be, let's say, company B. Company B says, you know what? You don't have the pre-funding money. I'll loan you the pre-funding money and I will provide settlement services for which I will charge you maybe 8% or 10% or 15% per year. Imagine what 15% what a year would mean on $100 that you take a loan out for, for let's say three days, four days. It's nothing, it's cents, it's a couple of cents. But the company that is investing the money is getting 15% ROI on its investment dollars, right? And the best part is they're absorbing the counterparty risk. You don't have to pre-fund. And there are quite a few companies that are coming up and doing this thing. I've seen a lot of companies from Europe who are now coming into this and saying, hey, listen, we will pre-fund. I've seen some aggregators start to do this. They are mostly from Europe. A few from uh, Africa also, believe it or not. And uh, I've seen one or two from Singapore as well who are doing this thing as well. And they are basically opening their accounts over here with Circle. They have a USDC balance. They say, hey, MSB, A, you know, B, whatever. You don't want to send it to me via Swift. It's going to take too long. There's, you know, Thanksgiving holidays coming or Christmas holidays coming or 4th of July holidays coming, whatever it is. Or we may be closed for whatever reason. I have a USDC wallet. Give me the balance here. Once I've taken the balance, that means it's mine. And needless to say, when I have a balance, I can immediately convert it back into, you know, fiat. And from fiat, I can take that money away anywhere I want it. So, you know, I can take it via direct transfer. I can take it via an aggregator. And I can obviously do wallet to wallet transfer of USDC. This ecosystem that Circle has uh, developed, and I don't think so they were uh, very cognizant that this is how the system would work, is now being... Um, I guess, in demand by everyone else. So you'll see a lot of uh, Nigerian fintechs who want to take advantage of this thing, considering what the parallel market rate in Nigeria is. People in Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, Philippines, Tanzania, Ghana, Gambia, you name it, pretty much everywhere. And Circle is doing this quick. The key part here is because Circle allows licensed MSBs or anyone else to come in and do and open an account, um, that's the main thing. The question is, what if you're not licensed? Well, you can still open an account. No one, no one, no one is going to stop you. However, however, if you do money transmission without a license, Circle has the right to close this account without informing you, or or or, or will seize the fund. So that risk will be there. So why would you want to do that? Again, there is a lot of debate if you are if you are holding on to USDC. And this USDC decides to go to Brazil. What happens there? Uh, well, nothing. It's just gone to Brazil. Yes, but what happens if the USDC originated from New York? Do you, with your license abroad, can you take possession of a USDC that was originating in New York and you don't have a bit license? Circle may. So these are questions that need to be answered. I have asked a few questions over here. And, um, you know, I've put these over here and, you know, you can uh, look at them any which way you feel like and you can answer or get a legal opinion. 
But this diagram is going to be put on, this, this video is going to be on the web. This a high resolution PDF and JPEG of this diagram is also going to be on the web. The questions will also be on the web. There's a video I made on this whole thing with Circle uh, that is also going to be, it's a separate video with me talking about how uh, companies are taking advantage of this thing of stable coins. And mind you, it's not just Circle. So this is important to understand. Other issuers of stable coin are also finding themselves that this is a fantastic thing. And what you will see more and more is not just personal transfers, meaning not remittance transfers, but you will see more and more of B2B transfers because moving, you know, $142,000 on a weekend is not possible, but with USDC, absolutely possible. And the uh, cashing out part can be done, of, the redemption part of the USDC can be done locally here within Circle in the US, or if you have a local liquidity provider or an exchange that will sell, you know, USDC and you can convert it to your local currency, it can also be done there. Anyways, I hope this has been beneficial in for you in understanding the ecosystem and how companies are using this and building on top of this thing. Needless to say, the example I've shown just happens to be a single facet. There are many, many areas where people are innovating and applying this thing. If you have a question or a comment, please put it down below in the comment section. As always, it was very nice talking to you. Please subscribe if you think this type of content is useful. Till next time, this is Faisal Khan. Signing out.